Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Norgon 111, and welcome back to Leaf's Odyssey. Uh, basically, since the last time when I was editing the video for this room, I basically saw the solution idea, uh, as sometimes happens with puzzle games. And since the last video, I also returned to Chain and figured out what was going on in that one. And so we are going to kind of open with these two. So, let's see. The idea I finally had, and I kind of, I kind of said the words of the idea uh, in the previous video, was... So the problem that we have is basically the guy to my south ends up killing himself whenever I come up here. Uh, and that's bad news for me uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, because I need him to come over here and be able to help kill this guy over here. And in order to pre prevent that from happening, what I actually need to do is maneuver one of the snakes in there, flying snakes, to prevent him. And so if I just get both of these guys out and have them come chase me around here, and then I go back here and now I keep moving to the left, the southernmost of the two snakes, due to already facing to the left and still having that axis preference, is going to move down there and be flying over the hot coals, which will prevent the bug bomb from walking onto the hot coals. Now I can kill this guy. I can go up here to fetch this guy. The other bug bomb is still alive in the south. Now I can kill uh, each of these guys. And I think... Uh, no, actually... That does not work. So what's the order that I need to do things here? I suppose I could uh, dance somehow. Here we go. Uh, nope, I'm dead here too. Okay, so let's back up to here. Here, I can just wait, kill you, then come over here. I can wait for you to go off. No, I need to use you to break open the wall. That's right. So, I walked away, you didn't move, you were standing on hot coals, and so that ended up killing you. And now I can drag this guy out. There we go. And now all I need to do... Hmm, how do I maneuver this guy into a corner? He should probably have line of sight through the lamps. Yes, he does. And so that's the key. And so once he does that, I can get close enough to him to cause the bomb to go off, to kill the flying snake, to get the key, <laughs> and clear another room. Oh my goodness, hooray! Okay, so that is one room done. And then with Chain, I talked about the fact uh, that there isn't any kind of grid view, making it hard to see the grid of tiles to see exactly how big the space is in here, which I think is one of the things that I was struggling with or whatever. Like, it's kind of like too tall to stretch five guys all the way up to here, and even wider to try to get guys across here. Um, but when I just spent some more time playing around with it, like, the general idea I had was, what if I could stretch these guys kind of diagonally between the toggle switch that I'm trying to hit? and the area that I need to stand in the upper left. And it turns out that just kind of playing around with that idea, I was able to get something to work. So if I go here and wait and wait and wait, here and wait and wait, here and wait, and here. So now I've got these five guys lined up diagonally. The bottommost guy, if he were to explode, would hit the toggle switch. I can walk past them since they only change their facing direction. And since it takes a turn, just as a reminder, by the way, this one toggles these three, this one toggles these two, and so I determined I needed to be standing here, and while I'm standing here, have somehow this toggle switch get hit. And so, if I move to the right, that will cause this guy to be a bomb, but then I can hurry up and move back to the left. That guy explodes, causing a chain reaction of explosions that hits the switch, and now I'm standing up on top of here, which is what I needed to be able to do. And so now if I hit this toggle switch, the flying snake is released. I can kill him, and that opens the door that opens after all the enemies are killed, and we can finally go into the next room. Hooray! <laughs> okay. Um, 
yeah, I think I was not as well rested yesterday, and actually I had a, it's the afternoon, but I had a really good nap this afternoon. <laughs> and so I'm feeling energized, um, and hopefully that will carry on into new rooms, rather than just the rooms I've already solved. Choreography. By the way, somewhere along the line we picked up some new journal stuff. Flying Snake. Flying Snake can safely rest over hot coals. Right, I placed him over the hot coals uh, when I was solving Peekaboo, and then he just kind of sat there, uh, blocking the bomb bug from trying to go there. Okay, great. So, what do we have going on in this room? Choreography. It sounds like we're doing a dance number. Uh, there are five pressure plates. Each one is wired to a different thing, but in a particular order. So there's the bottommost, then the topmost, then the fourth one, then the second one, and finally the middle one. And somehow I would want those to happen in an order to where they all got pressed while I am trying to make my way over. If I try to go this way, these are trapdoors that are going to be falling behind me, and this won't be done. This won't be open yet. Because it's a monster gate. That's only going to open after all the monsters are dead. If I were walking across here, if all of these doors could be opened, then I could kill the flying snake. But then I'd also need to kill the bomb bug somehow. Are these sitting on... They're sitting on hot coals. I see. So I need somehow magically and mystically... Actually, let's do an experiment really quick. Let's just grab a bomb buck. And I'm just going to wait a couple of times. Uh, this is going to kill me, but let's just witness what happens to the doors. So if I wait... It does open the door. We can see the door opened over here. What happens after the bomb goes off? There's no longer any creature on top and the door recloses. Okay. So somehow... Oh, I could walk all the way across here and then do a choreography dance along here with some bugs already lined up over here so that they open each of these doors in order so that the sky will kind of like come out toward me. So I want the bottom one. So bottom, top. So five, one, four, two, three. Five, one, four, two, three, I think is what I want. So in that case, I think it might be as simple as, uh, I'm doing things the opposite order that I want to do them. Five, one, four, two, three. So I want that backwards. So I want you last. I want you second to last. Five, one, four, two, three. So four. One. Five. So if I set them up like this, they're just going to turn to face me as I walk past. Yeah, this is actually elegant now that I see all the mechanics at play. I can walk across here. It's fine. Don't worry about it. They are each going to take one step towards me as I do this, which I think is fine. This one is going to land here. I need him to stay there and not die while the flying snake tries to move closer to me. Oh, stay there and not die. That's not a thing he can do. And if he moves off of it, hmm. All right, let's experiment. I see the flying snake tried to move one step closer to me and ended up on top of the doorway, which is just fine with me. Okay, so there, the flying snake has made one step towards where he's going, and now he's made another step towards where he's going. Meanwhile, I need to dance up here, and now everything will work out fine. So the flying snake has made another step of progress up top. Yeah, and then we're just doing a little dance number where we dance back and forth. Each one brings another bomb bug, brings open another doorway for the flying snake, and it all just works out. 
And now the flying snake is here, and I'm here, and I get to attack him. Flying snake is dead, and I have access to the key. Okay. And this is now where I double check that I am recording. Hooray! <laughs> Things are going well. Choreography. I've got three keys. Okay, so with three keys... Um... I forgot to... Uh... How do I do this? Take a screenshot with my screenshot tool, but if I do this and go back to play this room again, it'll show me the beginning of the room. And it's not on screen, but now I have a screenshot of what that room looked like. Okay, good for me. Okay, so let's go back to wherever we began where we needed three yellow keys, which appears to be right here. Bong Bug Cavern. It's now complete. We'll spend our three yellow keys to get a green key. And then we'll bring the green key back upstairs. Right, and that means I will be able to open a door over here. All right, and we've got the uh, overworld music again. So we can leave the rocky opening and end up in Ridgeline. Okay, so I'm just taking a moment to parse this on my own. There's a push block here. And there's a trapdoor here over a pit. We do have to kill all the monsters. Why can I? Why do I need the push block? Why can I not just do something as simple as? Oh, how do I get? Hmm. Well, can't I? I see. If I do this, I'll kill this guy. Sure. But now there's a pit here. If I push the push block into the pit, what happens? Oh. Also, I trapped myself. How do I get the push block out? What an interesting question. So the act of pushing the push block also causes me to move. Explosions, that's right. We saw previously that explosions can affect push blocks. So if I get this guy onto this lighter colored grass that I think is sitting right there, and then move him here, and wait for him to come here, get ready to explode. I run away from the explosion. Now I have access to the push block. And so now presumably I can use the push block to fill the pit, I'm guessing. No, that just drops it into the pit. Okay, then I think I understand. The push block is not meant to fill the pit. That's not a mechanic, apparently. It's meant to block a line of sight so that this guy doesn't see me yet and doesn't explode, enabling me to come into the room and explode both of these guys, and then I can exit through here. There we go. Okay, so push blocks block line of sight, which I can't remember if we've seen that before. Uh, my journal doesn't care to call that out. And now all of a sudden, we are at some kind of junction, the Tower Plaza. Let's read some signs. West, Overlook Point. Northwest, Angry Eye Canyon. North, Tower of Destiny. That was what was pointed out at the very end, or sorry, at the very beginning. Uh, it was like Tower of Destiny this way, and so, and I think its name suggests that it might be like an endgame kind of area. Farther north, Block Hills. Whoa, what is that? Is there like a teleporter? Okay, I have to tr try this out. Tower Plaza, travel to, and that's my only option. I'm imagining that this is fast travel, and so when we see one of these symbols, we can fast travel somewhere elsewhere on the map. And once I see a second one of them, uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead, you can't see it right now, sorry. I'll figure out what I want to do in terms of future Let's Playing when I'm using my screenshot mapping tool. Uh, but I'm going to make a note that this place has a warp. And when I see a second one, then I'll be able to highlight both of them on the map at the same time to remember where I can go to when I'm looking at my home map. And also, okay, so there is a map in this game. So J opens the journal. I think it's M that opens the map. Yeah. And so I've never actually taken a look at what you can do in the map here. And so it shows the names of the areas. But yeah, it is just like a small mini-map kind of thing. Oh, and you could show the floors. Here's zero and one. Okay, so this will be a good way for me to just kind of verify that the map I'm looking at on my screenshot mapping tool appears to be correct. 
And oh, and it's got its own oh x y z coordinates. So that's zero. Underground is negative one. Okay, that's cool. Neat. And then I can just escape out of that. All right. Neat. Sorry, some of my own indulgences there. Okay, so what else do we have? East Slug Marsh. Sounds wonderful. South Statue Volcano. Volcano. I have been streaming Stardew Valley, uh, and some of the newer content includes a volcano, and so volcano is what appeals to me right at the moment. So let's head south toward the volcano, but it appears that this is the first kind of big junction where we can kind of choose our own adventure. I see the statues, and it was called Statue Something, so presumably the statues to the left and to the right of me are going to see me and do something? No. What if I get within range of them? They can see through the tall grass, it appears. Oh! Can I attack them? Yes. However, you're just a pile of bones. Are you going to come back to life after a certain amount of time? You have become a blocked obstacle to me now. I can sneak up on you diagonally and you don't see me. I'm Since you could see through the tall grass, I'm imagining it's not the tall grass that's blocking line of sight. Well, maybe it is. So yeah, it might just be that they can see me. And they do have a turn of activation, so I'd be able to sneak up right next to it if I wanted to. But then I can kill them. Are there other mechanics I want to experiment with? They can move diagonally. And that is a power that Leaf does not have, as far as I know. And so that could make them extremely formidable opponents. I can't think of other things to experiment with them right now. Are these all walkable tiles? They are. There's a lot of different tiles, and it's a little bit hard for me sometimes to parse. And then over here on the right-hand side, are these like trees and kind of like blocked kind of things? Yeah, so these are all obstacles that I can't go through to the right. Okay, and our journal will probably tell us some observations about statues, perhaps some things we didn't notice yet, so let's open up the journal. Statue. Statue awakens when it can see leaf in an orthogonal direction. Okay, so it was the uh, line of sight that was blocking things. Starts pursuing leaf one turn after it awakens. We witnessed that. Statue attacks leaf if it can move into his tile. Okay. Statue can be killed by leaf by bumping into it, yes. Statue can move diagonally, yes, very scary. Statue leaves behind rubble when killed, and the rubble appears to be an obstacle. Oh, and there's even some rubble that's already here. Almost as though an adventurer has been here before me. So, I need to kill all the monsters to get through the door at the south. There are three pressure plates. This feels like a relatively... Oh, I'm going to need pressure plates held down simultaneously, which means I need some rubble to end up on these pressure plates. So this one opens the south one, that one opens the south one, this one opens the north one. So I could stand here, but I'm going to need two bits of rubble here and here. Do statues block line of sight to one another? What happens when I walk here? Only one of them has seen me. However, he has attacked by moving diagonally. He's gained so much time on me. Oh, I think, like, hmm. Feels like I'm dead already. Because I could kill him here, but then there's no way I could ever escape. No, this one is one step farther behind because he was deeper in the channel. Oh, and he tries to pursue me in a similar method as the flying snake, perhaps preferring to move on axis. So I want to hold down this button and this button. So I'd like to kill this guy on this square if I can, the one just to the left of me right now. So let's see if such a thing is possible. I'm going to wait, wait, move here, wait, kill him. The rubble stays there. It's going to continue holding that down. And then I think it will be easy hold down this other one because I could just move you. Oh, no. Right. I needed both of the kills originally to be on these two squares. Okay, how am I ever going to maneuver this guy somewhere useful? Because he is one step behind me. 
and so it seems like I either kill him or I'm dead. So in that case, I need to kill him in the spot that's going to open this. Uh, okay. I, mm, I think something is still not right, but let's just go ahead and play around with what we've got right here. So suppose I kill you instead. I've gone too far to the north, hold on. Sure. Suppose I kill you instead here. This is also going to let the other guy... I don't have to kill you here. I can let the other guy out. Is he going to chase me outwards if I go north? He does. Okay, so he's out. I can still kill you here to get one piece of rubble where I want it. And then I want the other piece of rubble here. And I can probably make that happen by going like this and waiting. Yes. Okay, great. And then the final guy I can just kill anywhere because he has been unlocked. So let's kill him right here. Great. Okay, I expect we are going to get more journal entries. And from here, it appears that I can go in many directions. Yeah. Okay, let me start taking some screenshots. <laughs> so down here we have assembly hall. Over this way, we have summit gate. Yeah, things have become much more freeform. I could go down here and witness islanders. I just want to get a sense of how much freedom I have in this area. Over here we have boiler room. And up here we have personal space. Okay. Lots of choices. Um, I think let's go ahead and start in kind of like the left hand side and try to kind of work our way clockwise around. But yeah, the mini map shows five uncleared rooms over there. So let's go over here. Okay, so Summit Gate, this is clearly where we're going to finish because we need three yellow keys, which I don't have yet. So let's instead take a look at Islanders. These guys are on an island. Are they capable of crossing water? Can they see me? They can't see me in the tall grass here. Where could I actually get one of them to see me on the very south end? So if I did this, you've activated. You are capable of wading across the water, and Leaf is not. So that's another power. Oh, and you're going to create... Okay, if I kill you in the water, you create a stepping stone. Okay, interesting mechanic. However... How else could I wake up any of them? Could I have killed you somewhere else that would have been a more useful stepping stone to me? Is there anywhere that there's only one bit of water that I could walk across? Not that I can see. And I don't think there's anywhere else I can wake up any of these other dudes. If I wait here, you still can't see me in the tall grass. So how would I defeat that? I'm not certain right now. I'm going to walk off the screen in case it adds any other new things to my journal, but let's read what my journal says about this right now. Statue. Statue slides laterally if doing so gets it closer to leaf. Not sure what slides laterally means exactly here. Maybe rather than on axis, that means east-west. I'm not sure exactly how to interpret that word right now. Statues can cross water. Statue becomes a stepping stone if killed in water. Okay, I see all of that. Um, okay, let's come back and take another look at this. Is there something else interesting? Like, suppose I went this way... Like, that doesn't seem like that's helping me get anywhere. And if I do anything but kill you, like, you'll just kill me here. I could also go this way, but the other statues still can't see me here. What happens if I kill a statue on top of some tall grass, I wonder? But I don't think it's possible for me to... No, it is possible for me to witness that. I could do it here. So first off, you're continuing to move towards me. So you can see me through the tall grass, or you just like always know where I am and are pursuing me. If I do this, it just leaves rubble inside the tall grass, and so now both of those objects are there. There's statue rubble, there's tall grass, and there's gravel on the floor. Okay. Uh, oops, wrong thing. Reset. So if I wake you up in this direction... Oh, 
here we go. I can kill you here. And then wake this guy up. And kill you here. And now I have a way onto the island. Let's sneak up. Aha! You might be awake, but it's too late. The ferret is too powerful. All right. So I've managed to defeat islanders. And I still can't cross the water, but I can cross via these stepping stones that I've made. All right. Very cool. So this brings us to... Dead Man Switch. I think in general, like, a Dead Man Switch is, like... Like, when you, like, pull the trigger, but then, like, if someone were to kill you, like, nothing goes off, but then if someone were to kill you, your hand relaxes and it, like, undoes the switch or whatever, and then that makes the gun go off or something? I don't know. Um... What do we see going on here? I see that there are some cracked wooden wall. So presumably I can just break that. There's three dudes. Oh, and it shows me their line of sight if I highlight them. So yeah, it shows that the tall grass blocks the line of sight while they're statues. When they're awake, I should highlight one of them and see what the behavior is. Uh, what do I think I'm trying to do here? In order to get to this guy, I'm going to need to build probably like three things here or something. I'm not sure that that's possible. I could also build two things here, maybe? I'm not sure that that's going to be possible either. Oh wait, well, let's witness some more of their behavior. Because I can wake up one here. Oh yeah, I could do what I wanted to do here. Actually, there's something I want to try. If I go south, you're choosing to slide laterally. So here... I'm not sure what made you choose that direction versus the other direction, but maybe it's not important yet. For now, I'm gonna hang out over here so that I can get over here. And... Let's see. You're standing on a pressure plate that's leaving this open. Got it. So once this guy steps off of this pressure plate, this guy is gonna be able to see me through this window which is going to wake him up and then cause him to trap himself if I am not careful. So I need him to not trap himself. And I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but at least I'm anticipating what is going to be a problem. So if I do this, the other guy sees me. And I don't see a way to get away. <laughs> So there's the other guy trapping himself, for example, which doesn't seem good. What could I have done differently? If I go down here, this guy kills me. If I kill this guy and then go down here, that guy still traps himself. If I wait here and kill this guy, I can't go to the south. If I go to the south, this guy kills me immediately. Could I use the other statue first to do what? Does rubble block line of sight? Uh, I can't find that out by doing this, but I could find it out by doing this, I think. So if I go here, wait here and kill you here, does rubble block line of sight? It does, because right now this guy should see- oh, and right, I could just highlight him. This guy should see me. Let's also back up to here and look at this guy. Uh, it's just showing me that, so it's not showing me any lines of sight or anything here. Okay, but basically the rubble blocks the line of sight, so that means now I can safely kill this guy. I can get around here, this guy is not going to trap himself yet. Then after you wake up, I can wait for you to come to me, and then I can kill you, and that opens things. And now I have a nice long walk <laughs> around. Okay, so dead man switch. I'm still not sure I entirely uh, get the puzzle title name. But that gives me access to another room entitled Sauna. A sauna, how relaxing. All right, fantastic. What do we have? We've got hot coals, obviously warming up the sauna. We've got windows that could activate these guys. 
How do I get in? I don't get in. They're gonna kill themselves on the hot coals somehow. I can easily see how to trap one of them in a corner. For example, if I just stand here, this guy would see me and walk over here. He would die. Then I'd need to get somebody to see me and try to like end up trying to walk diagonally this way to get me or something. To die over here, maybe? But then how would I ever trap the others? And I don't have any new journal entries about the statue to suggest any other of their behaviors. So let's just kind of play around with things for a moment. Suppose I hang out here. Oh no, you have nowhere to go and you die in the hot coals. Okay, that's probably a journal entry in and of itself. Is there a way now? So an idea I have is if I woke up a guy to see me over here and he were standing here, if I walk around here, he'll probably get hung up behind this guy and then try to go diagonally this way to chase me, which wouldn't work. Hmm. If I walked around this way, he'd get hung up diagonally over here. But then I might be able to get him over here and then, okay, I might be able to do something. So the idea I generally have is I'm gonna stay in the tall grass so that guy doesn't see me. This is the guy I am intending to wake up. I want to get him caught behind this guy. Then I'm going to move him over here. Then I'm going to try waiting once and moving over here, but he continued to the north. Suppose I went here, then he moves diagonally. So here, it seems like he also should have tried to move diagonally, but diagonally was not available, so instead he was sliding orthogonally. And that has not helped me kill anyone new. If I had two of them alive... Maybe I could get them, one of them blocking another. Oh, you're blocking the line of sight over here right now, though. Um, okay. I still have ideas. So my next idea is, if I get you blocked behind here, wake you up, both of you are awake, then I should be able to wait here, and at least one of you will die. Which seems good. And then I could do a similar thing to kill one more of these guys. Probably without thinking about it too hard, so let's just kind of try it out. Uh, you have blocked the line of sight for this guy, so I need to get you trapped behind someone else. For example, here. Yeah, that's a fantastic place for you to get trapped for the moment. So then... I'm still unsure how I'm going to finish this puzzle. But if I did this, I could wait. Oh, there's a move order thing. Maybe I could use move order to my advantage. Hold on. So, you are statue one, you are statue two. Statue one tries to move before statue two. And so, in this case, statue one wanted to move south, but statue two was in the way. And as a result, Statue 1 chose not to move. So is there a way... I could similarly use things to my advantage with move order possibly to kill? Well, even without doing that, I could kill one of them here. Is it possible to kill the other one with whatever remains? I have a feeling the answer is no. But I just want to walk around and get a feel. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for me to ever get this guy. But move order might come into play. So with that general idea in mind, I wonder if I should save the corner tile for killing the last one. Actually, I might not need to use move order at all. What if I save the corner tile for killing the last guy? For now, just take advantage of mechanics like this to get two of them alive, have one of them kill the other, Two of them alive, one of them kill the other, and then I can just bait you into the corner. Yes, that's a much simpler solution. Great. The sauna was indeed relaxing. <laughs> relaxing in terms of making me feel smart uh, after coming up with a workable solution. 
So hurrah for that. That leaves us at the reservoir, and I think that'll be a great place to pick up for next time. So I'm going to say, I hope as always, that you all are having a great day, and I will see you again soon with more Leafs Odyssey. For now, bye-bye.